And we've been joined by Coach Kyle Flood from Rutgers. Um, as we said, the Scarlet Knights are 5-3 and three overall, 2-2 two and two in the American Athletic Conference. Uh, Rutgers last played this past Saturday against Temple. Rutgers won the game 23-20. to 20. Uh, Scarlet Knights have an open date this week. Their next game will be October 16th against Cincinnati. Coach, thanks for joining us on the call. If you could take a minute to tie up the, uh, the exciting win against Temple and tell us uh, what your plans might be for the, uh, for the open week. Well, I, I appreciate that. It was a very hard for that physical football game. Uh, my compliments to, to Matt Rule and, and his staff. I, I said this last week, and I, and I believe it's, it's true again. I think their team gets better every week, and, and I think that's the, that's the sign of a program that's no doubt moving in the right direction. I think Matt's done a great job there. Uh, you know, we came from behind to win the game you know, in the fourth quarter, fourth uh, fourth down stop on defense, and, the, and then a two-minute dry, drill without any timeouts to, to win the game. So we're really excited about the win and, and looking forward to using the bye week to get a little bit healthier. Questions? Three questions for Coach Flood, please. Hit star one on your telephone to join the queue, and then the operator will introduce you. And we'll take Josh back in with the daily target. Hey, Kyle, are there any updates on what your future plans are with Ruhan Peel going forward? No, not yet. We're, uh, you know, we're on the bye week. We got together as a staff this morning, and we're using today to uh, to really evaluate the tape and look at our personnel. And a little bit of that, I think, will be dictated by uh, by how healthy we are, and, and I'm not sure uh, just yet exactly how healthy we are to make that decision. But we're certainly pleased with how Ruhan played. I thought he did a good job in the game. And next we'll move to Sam, Sam Hellam with Scout.com. Good morning, Kyle. Hey, Sam. Hey, uh, hey, are you changing anything philosophically in this bye week after maybe not coming out how you would like after the last bye week? No, I don't think so. I think each one of these bye weeks you have to, you have to look at them individually. I don't think you could just ever just run the same plan. So I don't know that we have a, a, a philosophical bye week uh, on paper that we use every time, uh, you know, this week, I think it's going to be critical that we get, we get a little bit healthier, that's for sure. That's got to be the, the main objective as we go into the last four games of the season. And then as we evaluate the tape and evaluate our opponents coming up here, you know, if there's something we need to, to work on a little bit, you know, that's what we'll be practicing. And I guess just with Gary getting another Conference Player of the Week award uh, this week, what were your thoughts when you went back and watched the tape of how he played and made decisions? Can you repeat that one more time? Uh, what were your thoughts on the way Gary played, uh, you know, when you went back and watched the tape? Sorry about that. It was a little bit jumbled the first time around. Um, I think Gary made good decisions. I, I'm really pleased. I think some of the, the most pleasing plays are when, uh, when he pulls the ball down and runs and, and makes positive plays with his feet. And I think those are, those are excellent decisions in the game, and, and I think those are decisions going forward that I think will, will allow his game to continue to grow. Thank you. And I'll move next to Ryan Dunlevy with New Jersey Press Media. Hey, Kyle. Hey, Ryan. Uh, in hindsight, Kyle, I, I know, that, how did you think Gary approached that whole not being named the starter until Thursday night? I mean, obviously the results were great. How, how I guess, proud are you of the way he handled that? Because I know he, you know he stayed after to make sure he got the, rep, the amount of reps he was comfortable with. How proud are you of the way he handled that? You know, obviously given the results. Yeah, I was I was pleased with the with the way the the team handled it. I think you know those situations uh, are always tests for your players, and and not just the players that are involved in the competition, but the or the or that position in particular, but but the other players on the team in terms of how they handle it. And I think we've got a we've got a team of players that that believes in the quarterback room, not just one player. And, and I think we've got players in that room that really are willing to come out and compete every day, and, and I think that's a that's a good sign for our for our program in general. And obviously, Gary's had big games, but you know, quite a few big games before over the last uh, year and a half or so. What I guess what makes you confident that he'll finish strong this year? Because obviously, that was not the case last year. What makes you confident that he'll be able to build off this build off this strong performance? I'm not worried about you know the last four games of the, of the year with the players. You know we're just we're worried about getting prepared for another another tough conference game against Cincinnati, and, and we'll take it one game at a time. And you know right now he's got one game behind him where he got better, and I think our job as coaches and his job as a player 
is to make sure we, we come back to work starting today, and today it'll be in the film room, but come back to work starting today just to make sure we get a little bit better this week as well. Thanks, Al. And we'll move on next to Tyler Barto with the Trentonian. Uh, hey, Tyler. Um, you, you said yesterday that you anticipated getting Paul James back this week at practice. How will you, I guess, monitor him this week, given that you don't play for another 12 days? Well, I think the first thing, before we even think about monitoring him, is we got to get him out there running around and see what he looks like. I think that's the first thing we got to do. And, you know, the trainers think that he's ready to come back to practice and, and what capacity he comes back in the first day will determine when we start practicing again. But uh, but I, I think that'll that'll be the biggest test is, is just get him out there and, and see for ourselves because all the work he's done so far has been with the trainers. It hasn't been with the coaches. Right. And um, should, should he come back in 12 days, how encouraging is that given that last few years, your your run game has been pretty banged up. So towards the end of the fourth end of the season. I mean, whether or not he comes back, it will not change you know, what we want to do offensively. You know, we, our offensive game plan is going to start with, with, with running the football. But I think what he does is he adds depth to the running back position, which is, I think, critical as you go through a season. You know, you're always going to have players get dinged up here and there, and, and and you need more than just one quality player at each position. And and we've got two guys playing right now, and, and to have a third I think could be invaluable. And, Mr. Bartow, are you done with your question? Yes. We'll move on to Josh Bacon with the Daily Targum. Just another question. With the kicker competition, um, not necessarily a competition, but do you look at it any differently uh, going into the bye week after you know, substituting out Federico? Is there, you know, is it close there between Federico and Borghese? I would say right now it's fifty-fifty, mm-hmm. and whoever has okay. the better whoever has the better week of practice will be our starting kicker. All right, and a follow-up. Um, a, about a month ago, you said Nick Marsh could make or could attempt long field goals, but it hasn't happened yet. Um, is he still a viable option for those situations? I think Nick is an option. I just I'm always I'm always reluctant to take him away from from what he does best. And right now he's very valuable to us with the kickoffs and very valuable to us with the punting. So I, I you know is he an option? Certainly he's an option. But I don't want to. If I think in any way it's going to detract from what he's already doing, then uh, I'm less likely to use it. Yeah. And we have any further questions for Coach Flood, please. Being none, Coach, thanks for your time this week. Look forward to talking to you again next Monday. Thank you. All right, and that is Rutgers coach Kyle Flood. Scarlet Knights with an open date this week in action next uh, November 16th against Cincinnati. Uh, up next in about one minute will be Louisville coach Charlie Strong. Cardinals also had an open date this past week. And Louisville back in action Friday at UConn. That will be an 8.30 p.m. Eastern time start on ESPN2.